two hours ago. <laughs> hey, dog, y'all want to hear my take? It called know. Village Made. <laughs> Village Made type. All right, we good. Mm. All right, we are speeding. I want you got the pick for when you have like locks. How that work? It's from a beard, dog. Oh damn, I can't one day. relate. One day. I can't relate. Nah, just hey, scratch my shit. Just, I'll let you hold on to that for mm, not great enough. Inspiration. Word? For me? No. <laughs> yeah, I knew you was capping. <laughs> then you work at Leeds. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> capping hook. No. <laughs> All right. You ready? Let's ride. Let's run. All right. Three, two. One. Action. Hello and welcome to the very first podcast, Village Made, man. Yes, Everybody yes. presents the Village Made podcast. My name is Ivan Gash. And my name is Terrell Hill. I'm very excited to be here with you all. Uh, Ivan, how we feeling today, man? Man, phenomenal. Great yes, and getting yes. better. It's it's kind of like like this room, you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling real orange on the inside. You know what I'm saying it's just real vibrant. Real orange. Straight like that. Mm -hmm. I'm black. I'm black, but you know what I'm saying? Okay. Orange is the new black. Boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, you fresh. All right, I did that. Okay, that's what's up. Yo, I was spent. Yo, he not even on camera. I'm sorry. Today's. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, anyway, uh, anyway. Today, today's podcast is brought to you by the Everybody's Network. Who is that? For the people. It's, that's actually our company. Bro. Really? That is. That's crazy. That's a company that we got down. Wow. What do they do? A lot. Like? For the world. For the world. Hallelujah. What do they do? Everything. Like what? Oh, so we got about six branches. <laughs> the Everybody's Incorporated. That is a company that's founded by myself and Ivan Gaskin. We are Everybody's Incorporated. We have six branches, the Everybody's Network, which is the sponsor for this particular podcast. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. It's a hub for all the content that we create for the people. Mm. Y'all. Y'all. Them's the people too. We also have everybody's apparel. Uh, ironically enough, in this podcast, Village Made, we try to highlight Black-owned businesses who have clothing apparel. And uh, the first one of the of the of the, of the year, yeah, the episode of the series <laughs> of the right now, <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> the word of the day is love, buddy. The word of the day hey, man. is love. It's the end of the day, man. You got to understand that whatever your day looks like, whoever you're around, the word of the day is love. Why? Yes. yes. Because work is love made visible. When you think about what does love look like in your life, man, if you add a little bit more love to whatever it is, you're going up. You're going up. You're going up in a major way. So we got everybody's apparel. We got mm. everybody's network. We have wow. everybody's originals. A man. Film company. Mm -hmm. That's a great That's a great situation for what we're trying to do. Exactly. We have a, a film network. company. We got to produce content, don't that's we? It's crazy because so we got a little bit of content coming up. One, two, three. This should be like day four of content. Are they tired of looking at us? I don't know if this is day four or day two. Well, hey, at this point, we haven't finished the calendar. It's a day. We're still shooting. It's a day. It's a day. It's a lot of days. It's two days. Anyway. Not to mention, we also have everybody's publishing. Music group. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to talk about, but we have everybody's publishing, which is a company for books, uh, comic books, novels, short stories, hopefully, eventually, children's books. Hopefully to expound that to something oh, bigger and greater for the world. We do have children's books that underneath We do. We do. We do. But we need more. That's the vision. We oh, need more. Me. Yours is cool. 100%. Shameless plug. That's what you want to say, publishing? I wasn't saying that. That's I was just crazy. saying. I thought it was fourth. That's anyway, crazy. No. Fifth is the music group. Or okay, the you second. explain it now. <laughs> you ask me. Next, man, you have everybody's music group. Yeah, yeah. Um, long story short, the very first album is coming out. It's dropping on February 21st, That's crazy. 2021. That's crazy. It's called Hyena by a dude named Surreal. He, he kind of did some things on there. You know I what did. I'm saying? So Y'all need to download, subscribe, like, repost, tag it. Do the little flag thing on Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Where you make sure that Archive. you save it. Hey, 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 okay. Archie V. Archie V. Anyway, That's what it's called. I think that you just don't know how to read good. Anyway, That's um, true. with that being said, the last company is Everybody Cares because at the end of the day, man, um, Bob Marley has a quote that says, the people who are making the world worse are not taking a day off, so why should I? Exactly. That being said, man, coming from different backgrounds, it's very important to, as a black man, be positive in your community. And the ultimate question is, who can count on you? to be that individual to stand in the space. How many people are on your shoulders or are better because you are here? Which kind of really brings us to today's topic. Right. Who you be? Who is your village? Who is your village? Who am I? Wow. Wow. Those are three different topics. <laughs> <laughs> today's topic, <laughs> I thought was who am I, right? But something tells me we're going to touch on a little bit of everything, which is really important. <laughs> which is really important. With because, everybody. Check it, check it, check it. This is not going to be 
some podcast like you the microphone because first of all covid breath it's real bad corona corona's bad too but also breath mm-hmm. also is it covid 20 now <laughs> 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 Something that's really important to note is that podcasts, and this is not, you know, I, I love watching podcasts, but I've always felt like they're structured like your typical podcast. It's not, it's not like just kicking back, having a conversation and with your village. And I'd say more than anything, Ivan has really become an essential part of my village uh, in entrepreneurship, but even just as a brother. But as we go forth and making this company a real thing and, and making our future hopefully something that the world can really appreciate. We don't want you guys sitting here just watching two people talk all day without getting out some context of who we are and then making the decision after that to keep watching. So this whole episode is dedicated to introductions, um, but also it won't be like super boring. So we're going to touch on multiple stuff throughout the introductions. Mm. That's my explanation. So who are you? No, I don't want to start. <laughs> I don't want to start. That's why I asked the question first. Dang, that's crazy. Fine, flip it back to me, coach. Who are you, Ivan Gaskin? Hey, man, you stay ready. You ain't got to get ready, man. My that's name is crazy. Ivan Gaskin, born Just in Atlanta, shots. Georgia. That's crazy. Raised in the north end of Seattle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the firstborn son of Scott and Robbie Gaskin, older brother to Miles Gaskin. At the end of the day, man, I'm a soul who was sent here to try to use words and dirt to build communities. Mm. Um, a part of what that looks like is poetry, writing, speaking, and performing. Um, that looks like music. That looks like anything that's on stage. That's always been the thing that brought me to life. Um, I remember as a kid, little kid, always like uh, we used to have this like it used to be this field where there was this rock, right? Mm-hmm. And um, basically like when you just have a bike as a little kid, you know what I'm saying? You just ride your bike places. So we'd be like, hey y'all, y'all want to go to the rock? So the rock instantly had to become everything, right? So that rock was a comedy club, that rock was a hangout, that rock yeah. was our little kid bar, that rock was our <laughs> everything, you know what I'm saying? So like, I used to jump up on the rock and do these little comedy sets, and like, for whatever reason, it probably wasn't that funny, you know what I'm saying? But at hey. the same time, you know what I'm saying? When you're the older brother, you got an automatic audience, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, basically just from, from those days, kicking in with my brother, my neighbor across the street, like, I just always remember being able to understand the power of words. Right. Because when you when you're able to speak life into somebody, like the first thing God did was talk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he spoke, right? And that's where light yeah. came from. Right. And when you think about everything that has ever given life, it came from the power of a word. Amen. The only vibration that we control are words. So to me, when you think about being able to change somebody's perspective, the words I love you, I hate you, um, I believe in you. These, 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 these tools that we have that we can give out these compliments these these attacks these are things that literally dictate how people move and understand the world around them and ultimately create the experience that we enjoy or or detest and that creates what our life is composed of so you've been you since you was a kid basically a little bit but i didn't know words back then so i would just be like yep i like it you know what i'm saying (laughs) right Okay, um, hey, that's what's up. Okay, mm-hmm. so so talk a little bit about like you know what you do for a living and how you got there in the first place. You went to college. I don't know. You know, what I'm saying? I, was, I was getting to that part of the story. Oh, you know I'm saying? not allowed to like you. You can lead it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I, I just can't have anybody from D Morehouse College thinking that I wasn't gonna get there. You know what I'm saying? That's especially wrong. especially that's your problem. Especially watch it, nigga. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Watch> <laughs> Now this is what I'm gonna do. Watch All it. the people at home. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a quick game right here because right, he started uh, it. Right? Go ahead, let's start this. He said, "I'm gonna name the top five graduates from Morehouse College, and I want you to do the same for Clark Atlanta University." Oh my god! We ain't gonna do that. We're gonna spread no, we can it. do that. Go ahead. We can. I want you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, ahead. go first. No, 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 please. Listen, listen, listen. Go ahead, please. We can really cut this whole part of the segment. You started talking. For now, let's play the game. Early. I want to talk to you. Early. Early. You said that's what's wrong with you. The Morehouse College was a phenomenal blessing. However, let's get back to the point. I was talking about words because words are what make up stories. And ultimately, all you are is your story. And how you tell it determines the quality of your life. Respect. And that's my fundamental truth. And here I'm, I'm, I'm working constantly on being able to bring communities together around these stories, around these words, around what that, that truth could be. To enjoy life more, to do it at a higher level, and ultimately to give your gift at the highest level. The highest, highest level. level. I love that's it. way up there, way up there. Jordan Heights. I know that's not that high. That's something right there. The top of your finger is but, like, probably like 
Hey, though. Boy. But, um, like, <laughs> like I, do, I get the point you're making. You're so disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, nigga, you could have, from the floor to here, so, like, hey, what's the fuck? You have a middle stick, nigga? Hey, hey. Whole point being, the whole um, world. definitely came from a very strict disciplinary household. You know what I'm saying? My dad is, like, no nonsense. He's very much so, like, a, hey. You want some kid? You better go to work. Yeah. So I remember I came to my dad. I was like seven. I was like, "Yo, dad, I want a, uh, I want a bike." He was like, "What you telling me for?" You know what I'm saying? He was like, uh, "You better go figure it out." And I said, "Well, I'm gonna get some money." He said, "Well, you need to go use that lawnmower. Use whatever. Use the things that you have in your environment, and go get some money." And um, basically, that was that was the first day. He, he walked with me across the street to the neighbor's house. Told me to knock on the door. I knocked on the door. I turned around when the neighbor came to the door, thinking he was gonna like answer all the questions for me, and I had to come up with a little pitch on the spot. I was like, "Hey, uh, you think I could uh get some money from you because I need a bike? I'll cut your grass." <laughs> 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 and basically, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like over time, that entrepreneurial capacity to create. You know what I'm saying? That's right. that's really what it is. When you talk about like creating value, like at the end of the day. Right, we call it business. We call it getting money. We we call it all these different things, but it's really just how does value exchange? You know what I'm saying? Like somebody comes in with a crazy skill and they they drop something crazy on your album, right? And what do you have to do? You got to give them something value for what the value they gave you is. And Absolutely. We just, we just use money sometimes to count that. Right. Um. Oh. So for me, in terms of who I am, very very close relationship to work. It's fundamental to who it is, and I always say that my 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 perspective is based on. I would say that. Love is is a very very core piece of that. Um, I would also think that just like that ties to God, family. Like Everything. it's not a long list, but it's a very like this is it. Yeah. And I think that um I can speed through the rest of it because it's just kind of like stuff that happened. Um, graduated from Morehouse College. Um, basically tuition room board scholarship. Went on ahead and uh, had to do that. Um. Had went to a private high school on scholarship, basically. Old day, shout out one time. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people understand what that is. But uh, did that and basically went to a private high school on scholarship. Then when I was college on scholarship, when it was time to graduate, it was like, oh man, I can't start like paying rent and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been living for free for the last eight years. Mm. So uh, a duplex was the only way I knew how to do that. I started a company back in college, made a little bit of money, um, used all of that money to go ahead and uh, get a duplex. And by the grace of God, started living for free. However, at the same time, started a job at Deloitte as a consultant. Um, for those that don't know, Deloitte is the world's largest professional services firm. If y'all ever have a chance to go work there, go. Why? Because they'll fly you to Miami, you can go to New York, you can go to Chicago, and they'll give you this green card, which means you can't spend all the money that's on there. <laughs> just like, just like but the whole point being, you get a chance to be around a whole lot of different perspectives um, at a corporate level, right? Because right. a lot of times, if you haven't seen what wealth looks like or you haven't seen what money looks like or how people move in certain spaces, you're not going to have any context for when you get there. Mm. And by the grace of God, it was definitely not what I wanted to do, but it was always a phenomenal experience because the the types of people that you come into contact with. And that that helped push my mind to say that, hey, look, this is not where I want to be. But however, these skills were something that was very important to me to go ahead and grow from. Basically took that and uh, started a business. So yeah. the whole duplex thing was a thing. And I just started buying more and more spots until basically the passive rental income from the real estate portfolio uh, beat my check. And then I left and wrote a book called Retired at 24, which you do need to check out. Available on Amazon and all web platforms right now. Everybody's publishing. Everybody's publishing. Gang, gang. One time. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so that along with. <laughs> no, but whole point being, um, yeah, man. So uh, transformational speaking has been a part of that. Um, real estate, building communities, for providing Respect. affordable housing. Um, that's That's been a huge piece and basically that allowed me a platform to be able to uh, participate in what I believe to be my highest gift at this moment right here. Everybody's meaning that had to go get some bread, had to go learn to do all these different things. Yeah. And that's when I met this individual right here who I believe has a few things to say about who he be. Oh yeah, so who is it that I be? Um, I'm still discovering, but I can tell you what I figured out so far. Heard you. Uh, I'm, I'm Terrell, uh, Terrell Hill. Um, How you more, spell that? 
<laughs> it's spelled T E R A Y L E. I hope the little ball be bouncing right here. Hey, it depends because I have to edit it. Hey, hey, hey. Do that. I think I think <laughs> at the launch somebody should get like a raffle item if they spell your name right. The first time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you spell hey, it right. Here goes the hoodie. Now, okay, this is payback. This is what this is because I ain't even tell people I'm from yet. That's crazy. <laughs> Crazy. That's crazy. No, that's quiet, actually a bad. It's not a bad idea. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. I no, like it's, it. it's I like it. It's a great program. Uh, from Reno Valley, California. I was born in LA. Uh, my older brother was born first. Uh, when my mom and my father um, had me, we left Los Angeles, bounced around the IE, and we ended up settling <clears throat> in Reno Valley, California. When I was about five or six, with my youngest, well, not my youngest, but um, the youngest oldest sister arrived, Tierra. When she got here. Uh, we was in Moval, and I pretty much stayed out there all 18 years. And uh, to give some context to who I am and who I be, Moreno Valley is not uh, a very big city at all. Uh, relatively small population to be a town in Moreno Valley. Um, we pretty much got a cluster of donkeys and one mall. Uh, like one mall. Uh, <laughs> no, I have to go to see. You what have this to go. Like. Yeah, it's like probably a tumbleweed in my mom's lawn still. Right. Like yeah. it's, it's it's definitely not what people think of when they think of California. It's literally the wild, wild west. But it, it shaped me. Like I, I grew up away. Like I, I won't. I, I love how I grew up because I feel like everything was intentional. Uh, every part of it was intentional. But I, for me to say it was this fantasy childhood is is a lie. Um, after my after my father and my mother got divorced, especially <clears throat> things got a little rough. My father moved to Los Angeles and. Um, we had to kind of condense five bodies into a relatively small apartment on, in, 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 a, in a rougher side of town, if you will. Uh, we, we didn't have a whole lot of bread for much, but we, we made do. My mom had two jobs. Like I watched her work and grind and that made me step up. Like I can reckon, I can recollect <clears throat> cooking every dinner for night, every dinner for night, every night for dinner. Um, because my weird, brother man. was my older brother. He was, he was. It heavily involved. He was older, you know what I'm saying? Like in high school by the time, we're going to high school with that. Uh, so this almost felt like the girls were like, not my responsibility, but I felt like I had to like the make girls, sure I went your home. Sisters, my not, sisters, not, not the women that the rest of us was chasing. I, I, mean, I have no game still for that. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't figure that out. Uh, but no, nah, yeah, I guess it, to be honest with you, yeah, as a kid, I struggled socially because I missed a lot of social cues, man. Like. I didn't. I didn't really understand how to communicate with with certain guys, most girls. Um, I kind of always just had my fundamental principles. I was bullied quite a bit, um, but I shaped this attitude to just kind of be like, you know what, man? I got senioritis, and I'm in seventh grade, so I'm finna just work and make work my love and, and just make that a thing. And then I made it, I remember I was like 2000, 2000 okay, 2007, cause it was seventh grade. Um, yeah, that was half of my life ago, uh, pretty much at this point in the conversation where I decided I'm, I'm ready to just go somewhere else. That's when I did my paper on Atlanta. That's when I knew I was going to be in Atlanta in my adult life. Before the entertainment industry was here, I did a paper on Martin Luther King, learned that he went to Morehouse. I wanted to go to Morehouse because of it. Um, <clears throat> the older I got, I wised you, up. You, you, you were educated <laughs> when you were younger. What they say, wisdom come from the mouth of babes. Or that's truth. crazy. Truth, that's what the truth. Yeah, that's truth what he is. Oh, that's what's up, man. Shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, no, I'm playing. I'm playing. Oh, I, I kind of, I got realistic about my dreams and my aspirations and and it just became me working on a lot of stuff. By high school, I was involved in like probably six or seven organizations. I was president of school. I really just became this worker bee. And 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 I became more of a people watcher than anything. Started to experience life in a real way. Started to lose some friends tragically. Uh, I can recollect at least three or four people getting killed while I was in high school. At least six or seven committing suicide. I've been in therapy since I was 13. And, and I think that shaped- Hold on, but you a black man. I'm a black man. That's what's and up. You go to therapies? That's my mom. Therapies. That's my mom. That's pretty great. That's my mom. That's that she gets all that. That's that's my mom. My mom definitely for for what we could do for what for what we couldn't do financially, she poured into our soul. And 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 it made it it made living in Moreno Valley 
without easier because it gave me vision for what's more. And when I finally got to Atlanta, oh, let me not brush past this part. The first time I got really into like anything entertainment based, high school. Uh, I was always into Def Jam poetry. I was always into like spoken word, but I never really shared my poems. And then I heard J. Cole rap. Yo, I heard Royal Flush, my cousin Antoine Tutone. He showed me, you ever heard this dude? He introduced me to all the music. He introduced me to Drake, Kendrick, well, Carl Kendrick. Anyway, <laughs> he introduced me to Carl. Anyway, my point, Antoine introduced me to, to Cole and Cole did Royal Flush. And that made me want to rap. That changed so my you life. you a rapper? I, I, at that time. You a rapper. I, I you mean, got an album coming out in like two days. I thought I was throwing <laughs> you a oop. <laughs> hey, shameless pledge is cool. Yes, I am. Earth, earth. But like in a real way, I, I, I feel like I'm me. I'm just an entertainer. I, I like to give my gift at the highest level. And when I was a youth, <clears throat> especially around my high school year when I started rapping, I recognized that I wasn't getting bullied on campus anymore. I recognized it was the people who were kind of ousting me and making fun of me were now inviting me to be around. They didn't make me want to be around them, but I did learn at that age that I have to teach people how to treat me. Talk about that. What does that mean? I mean, it means exactly what I said. I think at that point in time, okay, let me fast forward and I'll touch on that point at this point. I started acting sophomore year college. And and it was this web series called College Boyfriends. It was on it was on campus. I knew I knew you from someplace. Yeah, <laughs> Black Twitter. Let us know. <laughs> That's where I sharpened my acting skills. Uh, but like uh, Tina Shakia, creator of the show, was looking to audition a couple of people for a few roles. It was like this reality series, but it was mostly improv. We didn't write no scripts. We were just giving real situations, and it was crazy. It was crazy. I, I fell in love with something else. But I also learned. Okay, when I got to campus, I was being treated a certain way just because I'm not used to the Atlanta culture. And again, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nerd, <laughs> for real, for real. Uh, but but uh, when I started acting, I started getting different energy on campus. And I'm like, okay. So basically embrace what feels natural to you and then whoever is naturally supposed to be around will be. And for whomever is, is not supposed to be around, they will naturally fizzle away. And for whoever stays around, if you want them to be a part of your village, you're going to have to let them know who you are before they tell you. You know what I mean? You're supposed to let them know how you feel, what's important to you. And in order for you to get that, <clears throat> you got to figure that stuff out. So when I got to Atlanta, I really went on this spiritual journey where I, I actually hadn't rapped for like eight years. I mean, I just picked it up uh, in 2018 again, for real, for real. Um, and, and now that I'm back, I feel like I'll never leave. But I, I left because I didn't feel like it was for me when it was given to me. It was the craziest thing. I feel like I, growing up in Mobile, just to kind of bring this whole thing full circle, made me feel like it was impossible because I couldn't see it. But I could imagine what life could be like if I just gave things my all. Even if chances are it's not going to work out. But I mean, as we record this, like we recording this on February 11th. Tomorrow I got two movies coming out in theaters. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because I didn't even want to be an actor as it was when it first started happening. And it just, when I fell in love with it, I didn't deny myself of that. And and I recognized at that point, okay, you got film, you got music. What else do you want to do? I went to film uh, uh, Clark Atlanta for uh, Clark Atlanta University. For, uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, for uh, mass media arts with a concentration in television and film. And I learned about the film business and I was like, yeah. Man, I don't know. Basically on this journey of running from myself, I found all of these pieces of myself. And 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 when we ran into each other, the idea was imminent. It was like this, this, plus this, plus this, plus that, 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 that. Everybody's. This. Everybody's. And, and 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 that's honestly what it is. I mean, I know that's that's a real weird story to give, but that's most of what I can gather from my childhood that I think matters the most. Like what I learned along the way. I didn't really have too many crazy, wild memories that are like, oh, most of my memories are are, are like in the house with my family. The funniest the time I laughed the hardest, cried the hardest, and every other emotion the hardest, I was around my family in the living room. That's what we had access to. That's what we loved each other most at. And, and that's what we loved unapologetically. That's where I felt the most love. And anytime I went outside, unfortunately in mobile, I just didn't feel the love. 
Um, and and now I feel like I can create love because I understand it now. You know what I'm saying? So let's now we're about to now we're about to we here. Ooh we. So we talk about value. Yeah. Right. In your world. Mm-hmm. How much of somebody loving you for what you do and how much of loving someone loving you for who you are is A, okay, and B, are those two separate things? They're two separate things. And, 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 and fully, though. Fully. Because I think that... Completely. And let, let, me, let, me, let me pose a couple of questions. Okay. Right? I think that the way that I grew up, I was very much so, like, my, mo- my mother's not a materialistic woman at all. Right. Um, like she likes nice things. However, at the, time, at the same time, she's like not pressed. Right. So I feel like growing up, I always was very hesitant around women who liked very nice things. Because I didn't grow up like right. nice. Hey, we got shacks. We got jeans. Right. I buy my groceries and my shoes from the same place. Right. <laughs> and that's 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 how same I grew story. up. You know what I'm saying? And that, that was real life. Class was clowning. I was like, hey, look, I'm all about the package. Forget the rapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm here, coach. You know what I'm saying? Put me in the game. That was my life. You know how mad I, I, I would have been able to just figure shit out earlier if I could use that quote. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I'm all about the package, the rapper. You know what I'm saying? But for me, uh, that, that symbolized somebody not being about you, the person. Right. However, as I've gotten older, there are certain fruits that are going to expose themselves due to seeds that were sown. Meaning that right. if you're if you're a certain age or you're a certain whatever, right, for a woman to say, hey, look, I want you to be, I don't know, a certain level of financially stable. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is she wrong for asking for that? And I think that maybe a younger, less mature version of me would have said, yes, she's absolutely wrong for that. However, at this time in my life, I'm looking at it saying, like, no, I don't think a woman is wrong for wanting whatever it is she wants. And obviously she has to, she has to balance that out. But at the end of the day, who you are and what you do does create a certain aspect of your lifestyle. And I think that being liked for your lifestyle and what you have, I do have a problem with that. But I do think that who you are is going to ultimately give certain fruits. And I think that defining the difference between somebody who is along for the character journey, like, right. hey, this person is a solid person. They sow seeds. They're generous. They do all these things. And one day they're going to be something, right? I think that wanting somebody for that reason is still slightly problematic, but I think that's different than a straight person. Hey, look, I'm trying to take from what it is that they have. I'm not looking to contribute. I literally just want what they have without working for it. Okay, so I think it all starts at the roots. Let's talk about the roots. I think- In the dirt, good dirt. Okay. In the mud. In the same exact soil that you can blow, bro. In the same exact soil that you can grow grass, you can grow weeds. Absolutely. And, and, and that could be real love or fake love. 100%. I think it's separate entities when you talk about people loving you for what you do and loving you for who you are. First of all, when we talk about what you do, you're only exposed to what I do because it's 2021 and we have social media. 100%. And that's the thing. People don't get to know who we are as people. We're only showing them a highlight reel. If you're on my Instagram, I don't even use it for personal reasons. You don't see my family. You don't see where I live. You don't see what I'm wearing today unless I'm wearing it for somebody who asked me to wear it on the gram for them. And that's because I love and support their brand and I'm willing to help promote their brand because it aligns with my principles. I'm a very particular kind of person. And since I understand that, again, this this is rooted in how I grew up in Moval. Like, I didn't grow up with stuff. Stuff don't impress me. And, 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 and therefore, if someone's coming at me because they think I have a lot of stuff, we already going to disconnect. And, and, and hang on, hang on. Let me get into it real quick. And, and for someone to love me for what it is I do, that is somebody who is a supporter. That is somebody who is a fan. That is somebody who has love for who you are, somebody who may be hurt if anything ever happened to you, someone who's impacted by the things that you say. And like you gave the example with your brother, right? Uh, if he has a good game, everybody loves me he has a bad game. Well, that's because they're not looking at you as a real person. They're not, they're not meeting you at the same level. And if, and if you're not able to discern the difference between that and that, then it's gonna be harder for you to navigate these waters of the industry, right? So when you talk about people who love you, word of the day is love, right? What is your value system set up in? What do you identify as love? Because you only attract what's what's available to you. People can be attracted to you, but still get to you and feel an immediate repellent because it's just not 
something that you're willing to feed into or understand. And 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 for me personally, I would call myself rather selective when it comes to me giving myself to people like this. I feel like this is an awesome idea. Like like I'm gonna be honest about how I feel uh, in, in the pursuit of anything everybody's and all of my craft. I feel like I'm relatively honest in my music, uh, but I'm not gonna tell people what I'm talking about or or if that's if this story is uh, connected to like no like th I'm giving you moments in my life that were real for the moment that it was real because that's that's how artistry works and as an actor my job is to bring other people to life so there's a difference when it comes to what it is I do and who I am one is a task that I've been assigned to do not to mention what I do is in glory of God not really in glory of everybody else or the things I can get from what I do. So as it stands, the love that's generated from it, the love that's generated from it, and the real love that's generated from it is easy to discern the difference. I think money, man make the money, money don't make the man. 100%. We're on the same page in terms of who you are at your core. Right. Is absolutely, I would agree with that, very different than what it is that you do. However, if you put an apple seed in the ground, right, mm -hmm. it is going to yield apple fruit. Right. And if somebody were to look at apple fruit and say that that is a... That is aligned with what it is that I'm kind of doing. And, and maybe that's a bad way of looking at it. But if an apple seed looks at another apple seed and it's like, we're the same. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but... I, and I think all I'm saying is that even in, in our relationship, I think that there's a certain level of accountability. Of course. To where like, if I were to stop doing some of the things, because I can say I am this person, I am this, I am that, I am this. How right. faith without works is dead. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, a large part of who you are is the actions that you take. My dad has something he says, you know what I'm saying? He says like, you have to pray with your feet. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. have to, you have to ask with yeah. your actions. And I think that when you talk about anybody who does anything at a very high level, somebody says there's a lot of people who say, oh yeah, man, I want to go to NFL, 100%. But how many people did three of days for the last 10 years? A lot of people. Not, not a lot of people. A not lot of people, people just love the idea of what it is they're interested in. And that's what I'm saying. And I think that somebody who looks at somebody else who says, hey, look, your work ethic is is the same as mine or or inspires me to continue to be in that in that realm. That continues to feed my hunger. That continues to feed my passion. I see a part of you that inspires me. Right. And I think that that is me seeing what it is that you do without fully understanding who it is that you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see it a lot in sports teams. Right. Sports teams, you can look at somebody that you don't like at all. Like as a person, we fundamentally disagree at a, at a very foundational level. However, if you agree on work ethic, you agree on, on, on integrity, you agree on certain, you know what I'm saying, certain things you do, yeah. right? And certain things you do. And that's the part of doing that I think it gets great because I don't, I'm not saying somebody who likes you because, you're, because of your album or somebody who likes me because of a dollar amount. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying like the the way that you show up every day. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The way that you illustrate what it is that you have inside of your head outwardly. And I think that I appreciate people who, I was talking to my brother like not that long ago. And we were sitting over there talking. He was like, yeah, dog, I got to get my primal back. And I was talking to him. He was like, yeah, dog, you got to get your primal back too. And I'm sitting over like, hold up. We was talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> right? But at the end of the day, right? People who can have a certain level of truth within themselves and say, hey, look, it's not enough for me to just talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. I have to do certain things if I am this person, right? If I'm an apple seed, I have to set roots. And one day I have to bear apple fruit. And I think that that element of what it is that you do, if you are who you say you are, listen, uh, there's, a, there's a song, if you are what you say you are. Mm -hmm. A superstar and have no fear. Right. Anyway, whole point being, if you are what you say you are, then there are going to be certain things that you do without having to say them. And I think that being attracted to that and understanding that is not bad. I 100% I agree with the idea that being attracted to that is not a bad thing. I do think there's a difference between love and admiration. I think there are levels Let's to talk, it. This is the conversation I wanted to have. Okay. This is the conversation I wanted to have. I do think, I mean, I, I do feel like there is a difference between love and admiration. Okay, we're introducing I, different words. Let's, let's go ahead and define a couple of those. What's admiration? The root word is admire. Okay. So, <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying to set you up, dog. No, I know, I know. I'm fucking with Oops. you. Oops. <laughs> so, so... I'll, I'll summarize it because I don't know where we at at time. I'm sure we over 30 minutes. 23. 
No, I lied. Yeah, you lying. Uh, cause, started <laughs> over. Because that can't <laughs> stop. <laughs> it's episode one, y'all. We working up the tweaks. Hey. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you on camera. <laughs> Basically, put it this way. It's, it's like this. I think you can admire something without having respect for it. While love incorporates respect. Can you admire something yes. that I don't respect? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Like, that's, that's literally the line between love and admiration is respect. You know what I'm saying? I love. Give me an example. Social media. That's the primary example right there. The whole time you're just looking at a pamphlet of somebody's life. You ain't never met this person. You ain't never shaking hands with this person. You don't know how they smell. You don't know if they care about you. They may not be attracted to you in a way that you're attracted to them. They actually have their own agenda. When they woke up this morning, they were going to do this, 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 this. You run into that person in the middle of doing this, 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 even if they have things going on in their life that are terrible in their life that they have to process, but they just happen to be in public. And you, someone who follows them on social media, has a problem with them. You encounter them, you chastise them, and, and you no longer love them anymore. You may have admired them in the morning, but because they could not give you what you wanted, it's gone that fast. When, okay, when okay, however, okay, okay, when, however, okay, okay, love okay, okay, doesn't okay, okay, work like okay, okay, that. Okay, okay, love okay. isn't even something that you can choose most times. Admiring something that you don't respect. Admiring okay, something. I get it. Entire, you're saying respect is what keeps it honest and what keeps it true. You're vested interest in it. Exactly. Therefore, you're, the you're, difference is easy attached. to tell. The okay. difference is easy okay, to tell. Yeah, yeah. When you get to know somebody at their core. That, now, now I understand what you're saying when you say admire one on the same page. When you get to meet somebody at their core, like in person, for to love somebody for who they are, you have to have been physically impacted by their presence or, or, or you have to hear something they say. You have to have seen them do something. Some part of your five senses has to be so impacted by that for love to seep out. And now you have this infinite connection to them to where even if they do wrong, you'll feel more pain because your opinion of them changes, not because you no longer fuck with them. Because that's the difference between admiration and love. Okay, well, love. And, and in this, and, and what I'm telling you is no matter who you become, no matter how successful you become, no matter what you do, if you do not understand the difference between people who are glorifying you, uh, idolizing you, appreciating you for what you've done, reminding you of moments that you've made them feel special, or just appreciating you as a fan, it's gonna be a hard time to really signify what it is you need when those fans are no longer around or, or when those people are not around. And, and, and again, teaching people how to treat you. I grew up completely chastised. I this is the full circle moment right here. I learned in high school and in middle school for real that because we didn't have a lot of money, I wore the same shoes. I dra I, I shopped at Goodwill and DD's discount, and, and, Dee -dee. and DD's yeah, DD's discount. I, I, because I, I I didn't have a cell phone until my brother went to college and I inherited his, and and, and I didn't get on social media until I was like 18 for real. I didn't. I, I, there was a lot of things that I was not socially inept to, and people at school let me know that I wasn't, and and made me feel like I wasn't because of it now because of what i do there's a lot of people from the city or or or, or maybe that i've run into before that i can think of like yeah i remember that moment but i don't know if you love me but i appreciate the compliment because you're admiring what i've done with my life thus far and 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 that is literally the line the feelings that people give you are as real as the moment that you gave them even if you've never met them but if you make them feel any other way, even if you've never met them, the love is gone because the love was never there. Heard you. Heard you. Heard you. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> go ahead, bro. You going to wrap it up? No, I mean, look, I, 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 I don't want to wrap it up. But I think we should. I think we should closing remarks for show. Like I ain't saying right. <laughs> we shouldn't wrap it up. We should. Just I, I ain't saying up. like I ain't saying like. All right, that's it. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Yeah. I think all I'm saying is that when it comes to who you are right. and creating your village, I think that it is very, very, very important to understand who you have around you because on Village Made Podcast, right, we fundamentally believe that you are constantly created by the people that you have around you yeah. and the qualities and characteristics you want to continue to reflect and exude and challenge yourself to have, right, deep in that gut area. Like, who am I? Yeah. Like, you can do that by 
A, challenging yourself, but also changing your surroundings. Like, what are you listening yeah. to? Or who are you surrounding yourself with? What types of people are you allowing to influence subconsciously what you believe to be right, wrong, better, worse, and, and more for you? So I think 100% in terms of when it comes to fans or energies that you feel like have changed entirely, I do understand that. I think that there is the nuance in between some people who you can look at and say, hey, look, we have fundamental, fundamental values that are very similar and we're heading in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And part of what it is that we do, we're all apple trees, so we should probably kick it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, right. that's ultimately <laughs> all I got to say. Hey, man. This was my TED Talk. I love it. With that being yeah. said, man, I think, I think the word cool, of the day man. is love. It is. This is the Village Made Podcast, episode one. Sponsored by the Everybody's, Everybody's Network. Network for the people. You gotta say for the people. You gotta say. Wait, wait. We're gonna put the. Sponsored I'm gonna try by. to learn. I'm gonna YouTube it. Well, it's going. I'm gonna go on YouTube. Figure out how to put the screens together. So right. one, two, three. For, for the, the people. people. I think that worked. If not, you know what I'm saying. We always get a post. They gonna let me know it. <laughs>